All right, what's up, everybody? Pi guy here, and today I wanted to go over how to remap your uh, your button configs in RetroArch um, and make it safe so you don't have to do it every time. Uh, just do it one time per emulator. So uh, it's actually a lot easier than it might sound. Uh, it can be a little tedious if you have a lot of systems installed, like I do on this build, but it's really not so bad at all. Um, and also, kind of once you see this video, you'll kind of understand how. Um, RetroArch thinks in terms of mapping your controller buttons and, and what it's going off of. So let's jump into it. Um, I'm going to start off with Super Nintendo because that's really what RetroArch uh, models all their games off of. So I'll hop into SNES. I'll just press X here for a random game. Um, we'll jump right in. So just give it a minute, let everything boot up. Uh, once you see the uh, you know the titles popping up here, you know you're in. So what we need to do is bring up our RetroArch menu and go ahead and press select an X. Now before we do anything, we have to turn on a master setting in RetroArch. And again, you have to repeat this for every emulator you use, uh, whether it's a, a SNES, a Genesis, if you use multiple emulators within the same system, you have to do it for every emulator, so very important. Uh, but first thing we want to do is press the B button to go back and hop down to settings. Go over to configuration. And by default, this is turned off. Save configuration on exit. Turn this on. Just do this by pressing uh, left to right on your D-pad to toggle it. Make sure it's in the on position. Otherwise, every time you reboot, it's all going to be gone. Um, so we'll hit B to go back now that we turn that on. And we'll, we'll hit B one more time. Go back up to quick menu and this is where we were to begin with so to change your buttons you want to scroll down to controls and we're going to skip this this is um the analog input type now i did a master setting in my configuration menu to just turn this on everywhere um i can touch base on how to do that for you guys but if you want to do it here you can go ahead and do that because um if you notice by default only your d-pad will work and if you're using a modern controller like a playstation or xbox kind of controller the analog sticks don't work uh because older games didn't have that back then um you can turn it on right here uh just press left and right to toggle this stuff uh you can even make your right analog stick control your uh directional movement if you want but anyway um what I wanted to really focus on here was the actual button configs. Now, modern controllers uh, are basically all like Xbox, right? So A is on the bottom, B is on the right, X is on the left, Y is on the top. The disconnect here is that uh, Nintendo has those buttons reversed. So on, on a Super Nintendo controller, if you haven't seen one for a long time, um, B is on the bottom, A is on the right, Y is on the left and X is on the top. So that's why some of these games, when you're playing with the newer controller, like obviously it's a different controller, but it feels a little unintuitive. That's why. So if you scroll down here, I'm on user one and B. So it's what button input do you want to use for B? If you're using an Xbox kind of controller like me, um, or honestly, probably even like a PlayStation kind of controller, you're going to want to put B to A. So you can toggle that again by pressing right on your D-pad and you'll see A is there and why you're gonna want that to be your X, X input. Um, scroll down a little further, you have the directional movement there, and then you're gonna have user 1A. Uh, you want that to be B, and this time we're gonna go left to get to the B. And our X input, we want that to, oh, I messed that up. We want that to be Y. So again, I'm pressing left, scroll down to Y, and there you have it. Now, the other thing, just to make a quick note of, um, you have all the users so if you're playing more than one person you might want to just take a minute to do this i already did mine ahead of time but just take a second and do it for however many people usually play with you because it's going to be annoying if you're in the middle of the game and you're trying to jam with your buddies and you know everyone's like i got different buttons you know it's going to be annoying unless you want to sabotage them that's cool too uh when you're done very important go up here and select save core remap file if you don't do that again it's not going to save going to be pointless. You'll get a confirmation message on the bottom left. I'll press it again. Remap file saved success successfully. So now immediately just go to resume and immediately once you start to play the game, your buttons will work like the original SNES. Um, it does get a little confusing. Just if you have in-game instructions, press X to do this. Like 
you know, just think about picture in a Super Nintendo controller in your hand, and it'll work. And um, what I'm going to do is jump out of this game. And just to show you that it worked for everything, I'll press X a couple times here, random titles. And we're launching Earth Defense Force. Never heard of that. But it also said core remap file load it on the bottom left of the screen. That's how you know it's working. Uh, so I'm going to press select and X, bring up my RetroArch menu, go back into controls. And you can see everything save B to A, Y to X, A to B, X to Y. Perfect. Exactly what I want it. Uh, we'll do one more here. And let me hop over to Genesis. Genesis is a little weird because, as we all know, there's only three buttons on Sega Genesis. So let's press uh, select an X, bring up RetroArch. Go down to controls. Again, every time you do a new emulator, you want to go back and go into settings and go to configuration, save on exit, make sure that option is turned on. If it's not, it's all just a big waste of time. So I'm gonna go back over to controls and this is really like a personal preference. Um, so by default, this is how they do it. They put B to B, I'm good with that. Uh, they put A to Y, very odd. And they put C to A, again, to me that's odd. A was furthest left on the, on the Genesis controller, B was in the middle and C was furthest right. So I like to just do mine um, A to A, and I like to make my C button actually be my Y button on my controller. Uh, which way do I gotta go? Yeah, it's annoying because it doesn't loop around, so you have to go left and right when you're scrolling through these inputs. Um, but I like to put Y for C on Genesis. So again, I'm gonna go save core remap file, confirmation mes message on the bottom. I'll resume, and I'm gonna jump out. Get some random titles here. Remap file, load it. Let's take a look. Select X, RetroArch, controls, and you can see it is all the same. B to B, A to A, C to Y. That's how I like it. You know, maybe you want to do X is your A button. A is your B button and, C, and B is your C. I don't know, whatever you guys want. So I'm gonna hop out. So the last one I'm just gonna cover because I think you guys get the point uh, is, uh, but it's a little different is PlayStation. So it would mess me up all the time because I would always have Xbox and then I would go over to my friend's house to play Madden and he had a PlayStation and the X receiver every time I throw an interception because we all know X is different on Xbox controller versus a PlayStation controller, right? All right, so my game's loaded up and I already pre-configured this, but I just wanted to show you guys uh, go into controls. So PlayStation, because it's a little different on the left-hand side, it has cross, square, circle, and triangle, right? Because those were the buttons on PlayStation. So uh, cross was the bottom center button. That's where their, their X button was, right? On Xbox, that's where A is. So that's why I have mine A. Square was on the left. I have mine the X. That's where it is on my Xbox style controller. Circle is B on Xbox and triangle is Y. So that's that's just how I have mine set up. And if you just, you know, don't look down at your buttons, it'll just be like playing the original. You won't even think twice about it. So I uh, just wanted to show you guys how to do that. Uh, hope you guys found this very helpful. I know it was something when I first started with RetroPie, I was taking in so much information. RetroArch was just very intimidating to me. It was a weird computery looking screen and you know, it just, you know, but you, you just got to jump in. Um, you know, if you're that nervous, you can always back up your image before you make any changes and you have a security blanket there. You can always rewrite your card to what it was. Uh, but I hope you guys found this helpful. If you did, go ahead and press the like button. Also, think about subscribing for some future upcoming videos. 
And if you guys are looking for a Raspberry Pi, I'll actually link that in the description below. Um, purchasing through those links doesn't cost you an extra dime, but it certainly helps me fund this channel and get some new goodies to show you guys as well. So thanks for watching, guys. Have a great day.